Good day everybody, welcome back to part 3 of Teaching Reading. Uh, we are going to continue with uh, uh, what we have already started uh, in part 1 and part 2. So these are the topics that we have covered in part um, part 1, part 3, part 2, <laughs> and then part 3 we are going to cover this. And then the rest we are going to cover in part 4. Alright, let's get into what we are going to cover today. So for this class, we will look at the three phases of teaching reading. So this is the three sections of how you can present a reading class. And when we are saying teaching reading, it doesn't mean that you're just going to focus on having learners read, but it will be incorporated with other skills, obviously. The listening, the speaking, and the writing as well. All right, but then the main focus is more on reading. But before you do the actual reading, you can use other skills. All right, for example, the first part could be another skill, not necessarily reading, but you can also use reading in the first part, uh, first part of the of the lesson. And then in the uh, second part, that's where the actual reading will happen, as we'll see, as I explain. Um, it can happen in the third. Uh, second phase, excuse me. And then in the third phase, that could be uh, using other skills too. That could be either speaking, it could be listening, or it could be discussion, or it could be a combination of all the four in the uh, four, I mean, in the third part of the lesson presentation. So that's what we have. Okay, let's get into it. So teaching reading, we will look at pre-reading, during or while reading they also call it while reading and then we've got after reading or post reading so why do we need to have all these three phases anyways so the first point that we have to uh, think about is when we have the three phases when we are teaching uh, learners need to be uh, to actively reflect on the reading and that is before they start reading uh, while they read and then after they read Okay, and uh, such reflection boosts comprehension. So it's like when they do all these, all the three um, uh, parts of the presentation of when it comes to reading, it helps them with understanding what they are reading. And then um, having the three phase sequence, uh, it is considered that it will um, enable a highly successful in maximizing the reading comprehension. This is just contending, like supporting the point that we have uh, mentioned here. So it's another um, person, like another researcher, another um, uh, guru when it comes to language teaching, who mentions that it's really necessary for us to have the, th of the three phases because they help with learners understanding what they're reading. And then, um, it is also recommended that when we are presenting our reading lessons, we should plan the three phases uh, in order to build background knowledge, practice the reading skills and strategies within the reading text themselves, and then engage in the comprehension instruction like we have to really teach the learners how to comprehend what they are reading. And then when including this, uh, when, when including reading skills in the lesson, we are recommended to use simple skills. So they suggest that, I mean, it depends on your learners and what level they are, but then it is suggested that, you know, you start off with the simple skills first or simple strategies first, and then move on to the more complex strategies and more complex uh, skills um, when the simple ones are, have been mastered. Along the same line, it is suggested that um, the challenging reading strategies and text should be introduced after you know you have taught the students to master the more simple or um, when they have uh, transformed into fluent skills, like the more simple or certain strategies have um, manifested into more fluent skills. You know the strategies have developed into uh, skills but again we don't really have so much time like knowing our curriculum status and knowing you know 
uh, the amount of syllabus content that we need to cover in a short period of time, you might not have enough time to have the learners uh, develop these skills into, I mean, in the strategies into, into skills, but just encourage them, teach them, and then encourage them to use these skills over and over, not only within the classroom, but also outside the classroom. Now we are going to start with our first uh, phase, which is the before reading, which is also known as the uh, pre-reading. Um, so what is pre-reading basically? I mean, from maybe the discussion and the introductions that I've just made, the simple introduction that I've made at the very beginning, um, you probably got an idea of what pre-reading is all about. But let's get into the details of what pre-reading is. First, it is directed as uh, help uh, as one that helps learners to engage in the process of discovery and to feel um, authorized, like ownership, to engage with the form and content of the text. So it's like you you know during this very first phase, um, you give the learners uh, authority, you know, to feel like they are in charge of their own reading that they can, you know. Uh, engage into the reading that they are given and then also um, discover you know the form of uh, the form and the content that is going to be covered in the, in the text that they're going to read and then uh, so in simple words uh, these are the activities that are done before they start reading so it's like what they do before they start reading before they engage in the actual reading of the text itself uh, the successful pre-reading activities are usually learner-centered. Um, I mean, we have a tendency of like wanting as teachers like to feel like we are in control and in charge of the lessons. So we do most of the work in the classroom, but then we have to move away from, you know, allowing the learners to do the actual activities, you know, be engaged fully in the activity that they are doing within the lesson. So it should be more learner-centered than teacher-centered, rather than, you know, having a teacher providing the learners with the answer to whatever they find difficult or summarizing the, uh, or summarizing the content for the learners. We don't need to do that. We have to empower our learners to be really in charge from the very first beginning activity of the lesson, but with your guidance. So you are more like the counselor, the guider within your lessons that you're going to present to the learners. What are the benefits of having a pre-reading um, activity or pre-reading phase? One, it is regarded that when they do this activity before they start reading, uh, um, uh, reading the text is very effective because it allows them to uh, tap into the to their background knowledge. That's one, and also for the learners to really build expectations for, of what is coming, uh, and then also stimulate their interest, and then provide them with some sort of information that is going to help them when they read the text. All right. Um, that information it could be something that they already have like they can tap into their background knowledge or it could be information that they do not have yet and then so introducing a pre-reading strategy applied uh, by skilled readers is also another task that you can do during the pre-reading all right so those are just a few things that you can do during the pre-reading and then we have now seen the benefit of like um you know doing the pre-reading before they start the actual reading of the text and then another benefit is also to support the importance of um, I mean to support the importance of, uh, of pre-reading is that before the learners start reading a new text the teacher needs to build their motivation and their interest I think we've already spoken about the interest already of the reading before they do the actual reading of that text right and building of motivation and interest can be attained through the explanation of reason why they are reading and then the importance of like this text that they are about to read all right in other words pre-reading activities help the learners to be more prepared um for what they are about to read so you prepare them you um psych them like you know excite them motivate them tap into their interest tap into their background knowledge uh, provide them with some sort of you know skills and strategies that then they they will need to help them and provide them with some sort of information that will help them understand the text better. All right, expectations also like raise expectation uh, regarding the um, text that they are about to read. 
and then uh, to accomplish the effectiveness of pre-reading activities all up to the teacher then to decide what works best for his or her class so i will provide you with a number of examples of what you could do but then you have to use your judgment i know you are just beginning teachers but use your judgment to see i mean try out a number of them and then see which one really works best for your class all right which one best works with the group of learners that you have okay and uh but for now i will encourage you to try them to try as many activities and strategies and skills as much as possible to really like get the feel of what happens in the classroom okay and then this means that there is no cookie cutter approach for what should be done exactly for which phase all right and nonetheless there are suggestions of the steps to follow to help you know ameliorate to improve the understanding of the understanding process of the learners as they you know get into this new text that they're going to read uh, and especially if it's a text that they are not very familiar with all right okay here are some of the examples or suggestions of um, suggestions that you could consider during this very fast phase so one you need to mention to the to the to your group of learners why they are reading this text so what is the purpose of the, the, the text introduce the passage all right and also help the learners use their top-down reading skills I, I think we have spoken about uh, you know in the previous lesson about top-down and, and, and bottom-up uh, processes so here in the first uh, phase you should focus on the top uh, down reading skills all right divide the reading passage into section especially if it's a very long text that you're going to work with and then also for you to work with the learners for the language features that are new to the uh, uh, group of learners that you're going to be working with and lastly you need to provide some guiding questions um, which will call you know signpost questions for the learners when they are going to read uh, the text for the first time so it's like before they really start reading uh, maybe you can go through the questions that they're going to cover when they start reading. All right, now we're going to look at some of the ways that you could be fo you could follow uh, during this very first phase. One, you need to establish. I think it's somewhat related to what you just mentioned uh, earlier in the in the last slide. So you need to establish the reading purpose, like why are they reading what they are reading. And then you also need to work into um, activating or awakening the background knowledge, the prior knowledge that the learners have on the topic that is going to be covered in the, in the text that they're going to read. And then you need to connect the new and the prior uh, knowledge that they have, like make a connection related to what they already know that you think they might have already or that the, the knowledge that they might already have regarding this topic that they're going to read about in the text. Next, you need to present background knowledge uh, or keywords that is going to help the learners understand better the text that they're going to read. Next, you need to also work into uh, engaging their interests, stimulating, activating, encouraging, you know, their interest in like you know fire up their interest into the the text that they are about to read and then uh, establish expectation like what could they be expecting uh, in the reading i mean with your learners um, expectations you don't have to give it to them you can ask them so if you give for example a title of the text that they're going to read um, then you can ask them so what do you expect to get out of this text what do you think that uh, the text um, is going to be about so they need to make for example expectations or even prediction i think it's one of the top um, main points that we're going to see here make predictions about what the text is going to be about you also need to build confidence in them that you know they can tackle this topic all right by and then provide building confidence could be done in so many ways you know motivating them it could also be uh, empowering them or um uh, uh, what is the word that we can use here? Provide them with skills or strategies that they may need uh, to um, to cover the reading they have. Build motivation. That's very much related. 
and then create semantic map or rhetoric structure, general ideas of a text. So like, um, you can give them not like the, ex the exact structure of the reading itself but it's just idea of like what they think you know the reading will be about it's just you know for the sake of, of building expectation of what the reading will be about and then identifying the style the text style or genre and then identifying the main theme making prediction of what the text will be about all right so those are just some of the ways but they are not only those ways they are, there's so much more um, that you could possibly do during uh, the presentation. I mean, like uh, during this phase, like different ways that you could tackle this phase to prepare the learners for the reading. Here are some of the activities that you could do during pre-reading. Uh, one, you could do speed chatting. That is just to say that they have a timed discussion of what the topic will be about, for example, or what their expectations will be, or what their prediction about the text will be like, but it's timed. So it's going to be like a speedy, very, very fast chat or uh, talk about what the text will be about or whatever, depending on what you guide them or do you understand, guide them on what they should talk about regarding the text that they're about to read without reading the text. Next, discussion. So discussion could be lengthier than the, the speed chat. And then brainstorming, like just giving ideas. What will the text be about? All right, what is their expectation? What questions will they have? Do you understand? Like that kind of, um, uh, you can go with that line, but it depends on you. What do you want them to think about before they start reading? And then you can use pictures. Uh, to support what they are going to, to read. Like you can put a picture related to the, the topic, you put it on uh, in, in front and then, you know, make a connection with the reading. But they don't have to read the text just yet. It's just like maybe look at the title or you put the title up there and then the picture and, you know, have a discussion about the expectation of what the text will be about. And work. Or you can use uh, pictures to do a game um, regarding uh, the content that they're going to cover um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, the, in the text. And then the title, so I, I just put, spoke about that, like you put the title on the board and then, you know, they talk about what they think that te the text is going to be about, their prediction, do you understand, coming up with questions and all that kind of wonderful stuff. And then storytelling, uh, storytelling in regard to the topic that they're about to discuss. And then short conversation, I think that's very much related to discussion and chatting, but it's going to be shorter. Right. And then Pictionary, Pictionary is like, you know, Pictionary, Picture and Dictionary, uh, putting Pictionary and then they, yeah, they're guessing. That could be also another way to kind of introduce vocabulary regarding what is going to be covered in the, in the text. Or it could be just like them drawing, you put the title there of what they're going to talk about and then you know, draw pictures and then they guess what the picture is all, all about. And then that picture, whatever that they draw, should be related to the text, right? Or the content that is going to be covered in the lesson. And then the purpose, like why are they reading what they are reading? And they, you have to explain that to them. And then prediction, I think we've spoken about the heavy. Yeah, no, it's somewhat related earlier. Like they need to make prediction. What will the text be about? What is the expectation? And then, oh, speed chatting. We have already spoken about speed chatting. Video, you can bring in a video related to the topic that they are going to read about. And they watch the video. They can have a conversation about it. Or just, you know, a, a video is a way to tap into their background knowledge regarding the topic that they are going to uh, read about. But it's a good idea to show a video regarding the topic and then have a discussion and then they start reading, right? Make connections. And then charades, charade is, uh, is a game of like acting. So you can prepare number of uh, vocabulary, for example, or points 
that you think they are very important in the reading and then they can act out those points and then the when one student is acting out the rest can guess what the person is doing and then they will get an idea of what they are going to discuss maybe before you give them a topic you can just give them the charade notes they act out different vocabulary or different um, uh, points important points that you think they are going to be discussing in the uh, they are going to be reading in the text that you're going to provide them and then you can also uh, provide them with a kwl chart uh, for them to fill in what do they know about this topic all right okay and then w is what do they want to know about this topic all right and then the third uh, letter l which is what do they want to learn about this topic that they're going to read about? All right. So those are just some of the examples of activities that you can do during pre-reading. So, you know, we need to excite. We need to excite our learners when it comes to really um, being being engaged in the in the lessons. Going on to the second phase, which is the during reading during reading or while reading that's also another term that you can use in this case so what is a while reading phase so it's during this phase whereby the actual reading you know act, the actual reading happens and then we do activities or tasks that are related to the text itself all right like reading and then doing task as we read or as the learners read what the learners need in this space is some guidance in um, guidance in terms of like providing them with some questions that will help them or guide them as they read all right and then these questions are done or created with the purpose of have, having the learners uh, comprehend the reading and then it is, it is also during this phase that, you know, you as a teacher, you may need to demonstrate some sort of reading strategies that are very crucial for them, for the learners to understand better the text that they are going to read. All right. And then when you demonstrate these strategies or skills, then you have the learners do the actual practice or actual utilization of the strategies um, when they read. So for this, um, um, for this phase, uh, it is uh, regarded that it is very important, you know, for learners to uh, develop uh, the reading strategies because it will help them be actively involved in the task, task of reading, right? The reading itself, like it will help them. You understand be involved in the actual reading and then help them understand better and then not waste time as they read and then um, the while reading phase focuses on comprehension through activities that require them uh, require selective reading just reading sequencing and among other tasks that they can do during this class there are many other activities that you can do during the the while reading phase and then we'll look at some of the examples here are some of the basic strategies that you can do during or while the learners are reading. Some, not all of them, but just some. So one is knowing the purpose for reading a particular text. Like really after they read, they will then find out what is the purpose of this reading. Is it to inform them, to persuade them, to understand all that kind of wonderful stuff? Or is it for describing an event or whatever that it's covering? Right. And then previewing and predicting, so to give the readers an orientation to the test so that the appropriate strategies can be engaged. Right. So they preview first and then they make a prediction of like, oh, so which strategies will work best with this type of reading. And then incorporating background knowledge um, to make prediction. I mean, in the pre uh, before they start reading, you know, they make prediction. And then after they have made prediction, as they read, they confirm the predictions that they have made. Or, you know, use the inferences, like infer from the information that they have to kind of answer their predictive, um, I mean, to confirm the prediction that they have made in the first phase. And then make inferences to clarify relationship and connection between information within the text. So that's also another one, like, you know, 
getting the relationship you know you know inferences and then they can get these inferences through the discourse markers that have been let's say been used in the text it's just an, as an example and then make making use of metacognitive strategies to guide the reading process and making meaning from the text so metacognitive strategies like the strategies that will help them you now think about you know these strategies um, that they are going to employ and then how they are employing it as they read to like help them with the reading and then next also knowing the rhetoric structure of the text in order to discern the purpose of the text and then the intent of the reader it's like you know the rhetoric like how is the text structured all right and then how like the skeleton of the text and then that skeleton can help them really know the relationship uh, amongst ideas within the text and also through that know the purpose all right and if they see that there's like cause and effect so they know the purpose of like the the readings like to explain something like an event and then its results those are just some of the examples and then also why did the writer write this text is through the rhetoric structure that they can get that information and then also you know helping them question the author especially uh, based on their prior knowledge as you, as they read you know it, there should be a tendency of like asking questions as they read you and then you need to encourage them it's like uh, encourage them in terms of like encourage them in terms of asking the author questions like when they read they are um, engaging with the author questioning them about these questions i mean this text and for the most part it's like whenever we question an author i don't know how you read yourself as a as a um, future teacher but when i read um depending on what reading i am doing i have a tendency of like asking questions and then in the next paragraph my question will be answered for example do you understand it's like you are asking questions regarding what has been mentioned right it's like challenging the author and then we can encourage our learners to do to have this strategy um strategy when they are reading text and then next timing reading to build automatic processing uh so timed readings like you give them a let's say a paragraph and then you say that okay read this within whatever minutes or seconds depending on how long it is maybe minutes and uh, to just help them you know with their fluency when it comes to reading processing so that they don't also so that they also don't waste so much time on a short period uh, short paragraph do you understand it's like we have to train them to also read faster uh, so that they um uh the ideas flow rather than because when you're reading very slow you always go back you understand like we have to avoid all that like reading back when they don't remember they, they've read but then when you read faster i feel like you process the information a little bit better than when you read really really slowly and then guessing from context uh, to allow predict uh, predict uh, predicting what the words mean for example you know guessing the meaning of words within context rather than going to the dictionary uh, to look up the words and then building vocabulary for variety of text type you know it's during this they can also build vocabulary and then building vocabulary can also come from as well uh, as well as guessing all right and then reflecting of the reading strategies application in the reflection journals that is just to say like for example you say that oh within this text i want you to scan all right how do you scan you give them steps of how to scan and then you give them a text and then they start using the scanning as you have um, demonstrated to them or explained to them and then after they applied that they can write in their journal the process that they have they were engaged in all right how was it was it difficult or was it helpful that they were uh, equipped with this strategy when they're reading but reflection it depends on what you want them to reflect on exactly now we are moving on to some of the activities that you can do during uh, the reading or while they read so one of them is identifying the main idea so this is just ideas of like okay then how do you get the main idea of the text so they suggest that you look at the first and the last sentence of each paragraph and then look for repetitive ideas keywords that have been repeated and then titles subtitles and then also ask the questions who was involved what is the general topic when uh, where 
it is happening, why, do you understand, and how to get the main idea of the text. So those are some of the key points that you can look at when you are getting the main idea. And then other activities that you can do is uh, list important uh, points from the reading, uh, consider whether the prediction that you have made um, during the pre-reading uh, phase uh, have been met and then make new prediction um, of the next part of the text like after they've read the okay the first paragraph have the prediction been met if not then make another prediction like what is going to happen next maybe do you understand so that's just an example and then fill in the uh, partially completed outline of the first part of the text or any part of the text basically or the whole part and then there are certain parts that are missing and then they need to fill in that information as they read and then complete uh, a graphic organizer that is reflective to the first part of the text or some specific paragraph right so for example if it's a story then they fill in the timeline okay of the chronological text or Venn diagram for comparing and contrasting information, like, you know, the comparing and contrasting ideas that have been presented in the text or whatever organizer that you think the text is about, you can create one for them and then they fill in the information or they can create one as they read. If they already know what a graphic organizer is or you have already used the graphic organizer, they already know, they have information of how graphic organizers are used in the classroom. And then next, you they can do a match statement that illustrates the relationship introducing the text. So for example, cause and effect, problem and solution, fact and opinion, pro and con, stated and inferred information. In a sense, that's just another um, idea is that you have uh, one side or information like you just have sentences from the text and then they need to arrange it which one is are the causes and which one are the um, effects or which ones are the problems and which are the solution and then they match like, if there are many problems and then they match the problems and their solutions as an example and then or if the if the idea uh, the text is about facts and opinions you list a number of facts opinions you mix them up and then they need to arrange which ones are facts and which ones are opinions and then the pros and cons you understand stated information and inferred information so those are the matching type of activities that they can do and then complete true or false task about the ta uh, task uh, ta text so it's like you know what is true and what is false about the text and then we have got have them you know summarize points uh, about the, the the text, but then you have to mention exactly which part do you want them to summarize regarding the text. And um, if it's a longer one with subtitles, that is to say. And then number eight, write two questions what that you hope and you expect to be answered in the next part of the text. I think that we have already mentioned, like, okay, oh, no, we've mentioned prediction. It's like if they can write questions and they read, like, okay, what questions do you want maybe to be answered? And then hopefully in the next parts of the text, those questions will be answered. And then next, identify five vocabulary items, two that you understand for example and then perceive to be critical for the text comprehension three that you do not understand but you also think the learner think that is very important that's just as an example like but then you decide like what vocabulary what do you want them to do with the vocabulary that you want them to concentrate on and then distinguishing between main ideas and supporting ideas all right for example if you have taught them how to write a paragraph we have main ideas and we have supporting ideas and concluding ideas if they already know that they, you have taught them about that then they can distinguish that in a text that is written in that structure not all texts are always written like okay main idea like topic sentence supporting ideas supporting sentences and then a concluding idea concluding sentence but for the ones that are written in such a way that you can you know come about you know talk about these um, ideas and then compare what has been written with what is already known regarding the topics. So let's say the topics about COVID-19. COVID what do they already know about COVID-19? Um, what is presented in the text? Is it new information or is it or is the information that they already know? And then evaluate the value of the text information. It's like, okay, whatever is presented, is it valuable? Like, what do they think? Is it, is it true? Um, do they want to challenge their ideas or do they believe the ideas that are presented, you know, supporting, you know, giving your opinion regarding the information that is presented in the text? Uh, so that information is from Hagrapen Stoller. Stoller. 
and then moving on finding the types of uh, uh, types of uh, text so is it narrative procedural expository is it descriptive no or and then the next one they can think aloud so it's an activity which the teacher or the learners speak aloud any words in their mind as they complete the task all right thinking aloud it could also be a strategy that they are using or it could be just information that they are finding or it could be prediction to understand but then thinking out loud like speaking out loud as they complete whatever task that you have given them and then next finding synonyms to the words that uh, uh, or the vocabulary that you think is very crucial for them to understand the text and then scanning not skimming to find the specific information and then graphic organizer i think we have already spoken about that annotation so text coding highlighting writing in the margins and i think also i have provided another text that is just mentioning about annotation because it's a very critical skill that we should have as teachers as students of life and learning as well as your own learners all right annotation i didn't know that i had that that already and then inferring and guessing meanings uh, of words within the context and then uh, learners formulating questions while they read so for clarity to form questions of the next sections i think we've already spoken about that or, um, earlier but just so you know <coughs> and then paraphrasing to evaluate the understanding of the learners um, up to a certain point uh, of the text so for example after they read two paragraphs then they can paraphrase or oh, just one paragraph and then they can paraphrase what the text is about paraphrasing meaning saying it in different way in, in a different way but then the idea should be the same ideas should be the same uh, and then paraphrasing like it doesn't have to be until they finish reading the whole text and then making mental uh, pictures or sensory imageries, uh, visualiz uh, visualizing what they have read about, like really creating an image. Because there are certain people who really work well with visualization, but there's all those who don't really work very well with visualization. And then after they've done the activity, maybe you can bring in pictures too related to the text so that they just match what they already have or they can see a video, do you understand? Just to create a picture of what is happening regarding the text that they are reading okay and i feel like with the internet work has really been done for us like you get ideas from there but then sometimes i think you might also need to shoot your own videos or you know create your own um, drawings so for example if you have a student from a different class or you're the same class uh, who are really good at drawing you can have them draw just tell them what they need to draw do you understand um, and then you bring those pictures in the classroom but if you are a good drawer yourself please use those skills to um, supplement the reading that the learners are going to do and then linking the text content with personal experiences what do they know already about this topic and then their personal experiences all right so for example if it's about bullying which really happens a lot with teenagers then they can bring in their personal experiences <laughs> as those who have been bullied or they know somebody who has been bullied or they are their bullies like they bring in that and then uh, they make connection it's just an example and then identifying connectors uh, linking words to see the relationship between words phrases sentences paragraphs in the text so this is now the uh, discourse markers the connectors that you can have in the text to get the relationships and then annotation okay annotation we have already spoken about that and then there's a, a pdf that is provided which i'm going to put on moodle so this is the uh, the the part that i'm going to provide you with so what is annotation why do we annotate how do we annotate like this we have given examples of how we annotate and then examples of like actually the annotation happening you understand so this is uh, somebody who has annotated in the text um and then what are the most important takeaways when it comes to annotation and this is where we found the information and what they have used when they created this information i mean there you see the importance of uh referencing it's not my idea so i gave you um resources where that information is from now we are moving on to the third phase which is uh, post reading or after reading so what is post reading 
So post reading is regarded as the follow up stage whereby the teacher can elicit, so get feedback from the learners about the experiences they were reading, provide feedback to the learners on how they have done so far, like what I've done in the in the uh, while reading phase, as well as correct some errors that the teacher may may have or you may have uh, noticed as the learners way. Um, endeavoring in the while reading phase all right um uh or also give the learners time to reflect on the task and engage in self-evaluation so that's what i could do and it's during this also it's, it's during this phase as well whereby the learners might be directed to review their progress on their reading in the reading classroom so their progress like think about their progress themselves or, uh, and that, that could be done through journaling, all right? So I, they need to evaluate their progress, like how much of the text did they understand and what questions do they have more, reflection on that, like how did it go with the reading strategies as they were reading and uh, so forth. Um, and what ideas do they have more? How do they connect uh, connection with, what they already know and um, what they have read, uh, what can they look for extra regarding this topic, do you understand? So those are just some of the ideas. And then it's during this uh, uh, phase that the learners also um, get like the final comprehension check, all right? They can give their opinion about this topic that they have. Um, and also just go beyond the comprehension of the text, you know, doing other uh, tasks, using other skills as well, to um, uh, other skills, to other skills regarding this um, uh, topic, like discussions about discussion, like more discussions on um, more discussions on the on the on the task more discussion on the on the on the on the topic that is presented in the in the reading or they could do presentation regarding this topic finding other um information or extra information on the topic do you understand like just going beyond the text itself uh, here are some of the activities that they can do during the post reading um so one of the activities that they can do is prepare a survey uh, related to moral and values regarding the topic. Let's say the topic is about abortion and then they you know, discuss the moral and the values that is presented or the use of technology, the values, the morals, the goods about it, the bad about it, you understand? So have that type of uh, um, discussion or fill out the survey, create a survey regarding that topic. And then next, comic strips. So comic strips is just like having pictures or they can draw, even do the actual drawing themselves. So here's an example. So let's say it's a story about a mother who is cooking for his, um, for her children. Not his, but her children. Um, so the first one, this is what happened. And then the next, like maybe the mother bring the food, say something. And then the boy said something else. And then as they read, because that is like information in the in the story. And then they, the next thing is like they have to draw something about paragraph uh, four. So this is paragraph one, information in paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three, and then paragraph four. Then they, they draw like what is happening in, in paragraph four and then paragraph five, for example. Do you understand? Or you could bring in the pictures themselves as I've suggested, like if you know how to draw you can draw or if you have somebody who's really like good at drawing you know consult them and then they draw for you it could be your learners your themselves like uh, within your classroom you just tell them what they need to draw they don't need to read but you just tell them what you need to draw if they are in the same class and it might be a good idea to to have somebody who's from a different class that's not going to discuss the the task uh, with you that can draw before you come to class and then you bring this to the learners you cut it into pieces and then they arrange it in the correct order for example okay and then character an analysis like uh, so if there are characters within the story that they are reading then that you analyze the characters all right and then next uh, quiz classmates for example now as they read they can come up with their own questions and then they quiz their classmates they can share 
the ideas like the questions and they ask everybody or it could be a pair work situations like you tell them how many questions they need to to uh, write down and then after they have written down the uh, the questions that they were reading like while they were reading and then after they can come back and then ask their classmates these questions that they have and then creative writing so ideas or words from the texts use them in their own writing so creative writing is like going beyond the text so for example if it's a, a letter on bullying then you can ask them to write a letter to a bully all right or to someone who's being bullied do you understand and then they use the information that they have already gotten from all the ideas that they have gotten from the text or their own ideas too but you know link what they have read to their own creative writing and then part of speech so this is now at the sentence level like if you want to look at the grammar then they can uh, identify you know the part of speech or whatever clauses that you have taught them or whatever grammatical structure that you have taught them they can identify that in the text so you just see which grammatical aspects that you have already taught them or you want to teach them that they can exploit within the text that you have provided them with and then area of, of interest so here is the part where you ask your learners to, to to discuss which part they find interesting which one do they not find interesting and then they give their reason why they find it interesting or not interesting just go beyond you know uh, the answers of like oh yeah this was interesting why do they find it interesting no this was in not interesting it's uninteresting why was it not interesting and then retelling the story like you know they have to retell the story after they have read they've comprehended uh the text they have done some comprehension questions then they retell the story that could be also another one and then picture dictionaries so or provide pairs with the uh, pair of learners with a series of images from the text and then have them practice putting them in the correct order so that could be one of them also and then game change so learners sit in a circle and then take turns to recall key points not pins but points did de point details points or details of the text of the story until the learners have exhausted all the ideas from the story i think that's a good idea like they get into a circle if you have a small if you have a small group that would be really like a good idea or just have a big group and then they sit and then they give all the ideas of the ideas that have been mentioned in the classroom and then complete a diagram of a larger um on a larger poster with prompts like i think i feel i wonder i understand so it's like you have i think i wonder i feel i understand and then like as, as topics on top and then they write you can have a number of posters if you have a big class and then you can group them and then they complete like you have uh, how many so one two three four four columns Right. The first column you write, I think. Second column, I wonder. Uh, third column, I feel. Fourth column, I understand. And then they just feel like, what do they think about the text? What do they wonder about the text? Ideas that have been presented in the text. What do they feel? And then what do they understand? And then they feel in. So let's say if you have five groups, you have five posters with those columns and then they feel in the information and then you come back together as a class and then you discuss what they have written. And then write a friendly letter explaining the rights to children being abused. For example, the topic is about uh, child abuse. And then they can write a friendly letter to whoever you want them to direct it to. Minister of Youth or whoever. And then they, um, um, they explain the rights. That's just as an example. And then debate. Let's say the topic is about child labor. And then they have a debate on that. Whatever topic that you will have. If it's about um, globalization, for example, and then topic about that, or uh, what topic can we have, like a debate that you can have. Quarantining, right? Quarantine, like they can have a debate on quarantine, like the, um, the goods and the negative aspects of quarantining or shutting down the country uh, during COVID-19. That could be a topic. Or with whatever topic that uh, it's worth debating about and then write an essay uh, so an essay yeah an essay the other one was a friendly uh, letter it could be an uh, essay so if it's about uh, child labor like disadvantages child labor 
could be presentation about the topic so let's say it's about the usage of technology or usage of um, social media that was the topic that I have read and then they make a, uh, a presentation like they do extra research on the usage of uh, of uh, social me social media and then they come and present into the classroom like what are the positive of using social media the negative effects of social media uh, do you understand like whatever idea or point of uh, departure when it comes to this topic that they need to present on and then uh, group discussion extension of the text action to be taken to protect let's say children working in industry so if the topic is on child labor then take action because maybe they didn't mention anything about actions on how to protect the children in um, during child labor and then writing so uh, writing could be any kind of writing really like it could be an essay it could be a letter uh, it could be a pamphlet whatever writing but regarding um, the writing should be an extension of what they have read about shouldn't be necessarily like the same information per se but the idea should be related to each other all right so those are just some of the examples by the way they are not exhaustive uh, there is so much more that you can do after uh, during this phase but these are just some of the ideas to like spark ideas also in your head of what you could possibly do and then next can you really just use all these six activities or all or any of these activities the answer is no you need to think about the lesson objectives like what is the lesson objective or lesson objectives of your uh, of the class that you have it should be related to that it's like you should support the objective too the type of text that you have because some of the, the activities might not work very well with the text that you have second the level of the of your students like what is their proficiency right some of the activities are uh, require complex skills when it comes to uh, completing tasks in the classroom so you have to make sure that they are the appropriate uh, comprehension uh, or proficiency level proficiency level of the learners next you need the motivation of the learners as well also plays um, a role in the type of activities that you will do in the classroom or tasks that you will do in the classroom and then the size of the class also plays a role but do not be limited to try out things and then the time allotted like how much time do you really have uh, is it a double class is it a single class and how long do you have to cover the number of topics that you have you know because we are very much driven by the syllabus co completing the syllabus so which uh, how much of the objectives um, have you covered so far how much time do you have left to cover what you need to cover now we are going to look at an example of uh, how the um, the three phases have been uh, used uh, or have been applied in a classroom. So this is an example from a high beginning level um, group. All right, the topic is on fast and healthy uh, foods. All right, the lesson gives the pre-reading focus on vocabulary. Okay, so the pre-reading is vocabulary focusing, and then the wire reading is guessing words meaning from the context. And then the post reading exercise is inferencing, taking notes, and discussion. Uh, all right, so this is like a general skill text. Then we have got here ideas. So before they start reading, so this is the vocabulary that they have to cover. All right, the, the vocabulary here. And then B, warm up. So do you like the fast food? Is it possible to get uh, healthy food there? So use the vocabulary when you're discussing this. And do you like fast food or not? Is it possible to have uh, healthy food wherever they are? You understand, but use these vocabularies: unhealthy, healthy, uh, healthful, sweet, high calories, low calories. Use these vocabularies and beyond. And then this is the reading, the actual reading on um, fast and healthy food. Okay. And then here, understand the uh, understanding from context, so the meaning of the words, and then they need to match. Okay, and then inferring information which uh, topics on the website can help you cut down calories, salt, and da 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 da. And then it's a discussion. Ah, no, it runs. Okay, and then now can you discuss about that? And what do they 
at uh, what are they discussing? So right uh, across next to the food that you think is healthy, and then an X to the food that you think is not. Then discuss the answer with the partner and why some of this food is unhealthy or uh, why this food is unhealthy. So they have to say which one is unhealthy, which one is healthy, and then give reasons why it's healthy or unhealthy. And then note taking is the next one. And then list the foods and drinks that you think are good for you and good for you. So the healthy food over here and the unhealthy food over there. And then discussion. Now discuss the food, the food and health with your uh, class classmates. Suggest so health eating tips using the list here. So it's like they have some guidance because it's high beginning learners. But if it's advanced uh, learners. You wouldn't maybe give them as much of um, support, uh, crutch, uh, or scaffolding as here. But you could also do that, but just to guide them. But they will be speaking extensively because they have so much more vocabulary. This one is for high beginning, so their vocabulary might be limited. That's why they are provided with so much uh, scaffolding uh, for their discussions and whatever that they do here in these activities. Now, to conclude uh, on the three phases, we need to think about so the before reading or the pre reading. The pre reading is done why the rationale is to establish purpose, activate uh, prior knowledge, prior knowledge, sustain uh, motivation, and provide direction right? during reading and while reading to prompt an active response to the readings. Like they have to be actively engaged in the reading as they read they might have some questions that they need to feel are complete as they read like, like they really need to be engaged and then after reading post reading so to extend and elaborate the idea from the text so as we have seen like write a response to the topic or write um uh, let's say it was about uh, child labor but they didn't really see uh, say anything about actions to reduce child labor if it's really happening within that country and then some action to go against you know child labor or what can be done regarding child labor but that's just an example and here we have seen some of the examples but i'll suggest that you read it on your own so pre-reading what what activities can you do or strategies and uh, what activities you can do here we have what for pre-reading reading purpose background knowledge new or prior knowledge information keywords uh, background presentation for better comprehension, interest, stimulation, expectation, establishment, com co confidence, and motivation, building semantic uh, map creation, style and genre identification, main theme identification, and prediction. So, those are some of the cases you can do in uh, pre reading. And then, while reading, guide reading to assist comprehension, prediction, confirmation, comprehension, monitoring, and clarification, just in the new. Um, new words in context, uh, difficult uh, paragraph examination, uh, inferencing, practicing, learning, value and evaluation, re reading and skipping uh, or skipping uh, certain parts of the reading. So those are just some, some of the examples, but we have seen so much more. And then here we've got comprehension check. So in the post reading phase, summarizing annotation, evaluation, and elaboration, vocabulary building, and going beyond the vocabulary that has been discussed, let's say, in the pre-reading, key information, highlighting, text and writer, appreciation, information review, text and personal experience of relations, uh, information integration and consultation in whatever reading or writing that they're going to do, new information application to the task at hand, author and text critical, really criticizing the text as in the word after that. Right? So those are some of the ideas now that you can do. And there's so much more. You know you can do your own research as well because these topics have been extensively researched and there's information on the internet. But I would suggest that you read an article that ends with edu, so which means educational or org. And uh, for the information that is uh, presented to in dot com, read that with a salt, uh, with a grain of salt, because anybody and everybody can write on these topics. All right? Okay. For this lesson, what we have covered is the three phases of the uh, teaching: reading, pre-reading, while reading, and post-reading.
in the next class, we are going to cover the syllabus reading of topics and competencies, how these objectives fit in, in the competencies, uh, how these objectives and competencies fit in the three phases, as well as assessing reading, just in general, as well as how reading is assessed during the examination. With that, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of part three of teaching reading. Um, uh, teaching reading. <laughs> Thank you so much. You have a lovely day in our world or evening, depending on when you watch this. Uh, and I will see you in the next lesson. Take care.